Morning, everybody. Hope you guys are well. We're live here in um, the shed with Shed Cam. Welcome. Uh, just hold on for a sec. Because we have to set up a completely new setup here, you're just going to have to bear with me for a minute while I make sure that everything is in place. I'm going to apologise for this. If it goes slightly wrong, wow, it sounds like everything's falling over here in the office. That's great. If it goes slightly wrong, um, what can I say, you know, that's life here in the year 2020, 2020 rules now, guys. So we're going to be going through some um, some drawing today, something that we've not really previously done in any of our sessions. Since I started at the university teaching as a HPL for some of the year at Cov Uni, sometimes I've been really impressed by the standard of drawing for some of the students. And then some of the other students have come in, they've got extremely strong, say CAD skills, for example, sort of great visual imagination, but they've never really um, picked up the, um, I don't know, the bug for drawing, which is a shame because it's a great sort of transferable skill. And it's a really useful, especially for somebody who's gonna become a product designer. Now, a lot of people um, have great little bomb modes of advice for drawing they're like oh everywhere that you go you're going to need to draw if you're going to go out into the design industry but increasingly there are a lot of um sort of product design places and agencies where there's stacks of roles for people who aren't like primarily like great at drawing if their skill set lies in sort of other areas they may be uh into the research section they may be able to do all kinds of amazing stuff in cad but never quite picked up drawing so this is for <laughs> this is for people who kind of like i'm not going to labor the point and make sure that you guys understand that it's like it's the most important thing because a lot of people say that and i'm not convinced necessarily that it is anymore but it is important i think it's really useful still regardless of even if you get a, a job at a place where they don't require you to be sitting there with a pen in your hand all day every day so i've got a bit of a weird setup here i've got my phone is like on a little tripod just here so there's a strong chance that because it's sort of extended over the thing, at some point it will get a bit of a wobble. It'll look like this. Hold on one sec. This is going to give you seasickness probably. Oof, I hate that. I hate that. Anyway, so hopefully that's not going to... Apologies if that happens, basically. I'm just flagging it up now. Um, this is me. I can just put my hands into the picture here. We're going to be doing some drawing here on the page rather than casting my screen up here. I've still got the... Um, I've still got the, the, the cam over here. There we go. Look, I could just cast the screen if I was in the mood to. Um, and also, there's always just me, just in case you feel the need to. So today's been mainly working this bit out. We're going to be going through and drawing um, a, like a one, uh, what's the word? Phil, get your brain around it. One point perspective today. I'm going to introduce some of the sort of concepts involved in doing one point perspective. And... Then we're going to walk through uh, an example of creating some artwork that uses it in a really nice way. So you guys just going to have to bear with me for a second while I set a couple of bits and pieces up over here on the screen. If you are one of my students, then you should be able to get onto the Discord chat. And that will hopefully... hopefully give us an avenue where if anything that I'm saying so it doesn't make sense or if you've got a question that you want to ask then jump on the discord chat and we're going to be able to hopefully get through and figure out exactly what it is that you need to there we go got the so I've got the discord chat here graphics no that's it something else looking good <laughs> Tom Rav says on the discord damn I gotta run home and grab my ruler Okay, I'm back. Now, the ruler is there's a lot of people who are um, sort of graphic artists and who do uh, this kind of drawing. And I've been trying to work on it as much as possible. To, the goal is to be able to draw a really nice straight line without a ruler. Um, and we'll, I'll go through a couple of exercises that I use to sort of um, drill that and train that. Because in addition to sort of being a mental skill where you've got to understand what you're doing, when you draw, there's an element of physical skill and muscle memory that makes life easier for that. So we're going to go through that if you don't have a ruler, then it's not the end of the world. You'll just Your lines will look straighter if you do have a ruler. You'll notice that I've not got any especially um, sophisticated equipment just here. 
when I first started trying to learn how to do a lot of this stuff, then I was fascinated by finding out sort of what pen does that guy use? What's the paper? If you watch some of the YouTube tutorials, people will be talking about like what the bite on the paper is, what specific make of paper they use, sort of like what cylinder they use in their pen, what holder they use, what kind of, what's the, what's the level of your, what kind of pencil do you use? And all this sort of stuff. Well, the reality is um, that it's, it's this and it's this and it's this more than it is any of this stuff. So I'm just going to be using some fairly sort of crappy pens today and I'll explain how you can work in a way that integrates with our normal Photoshop rendering technique. Now what we're going to be doing this morning is we're going to be going through doing some um, we're going to be going through doing some drawing then this afternoon we're going to do the two o'clock session what we draw in the morning session we will have got into the machine and we're going to be rendering that up in Photoshop. So hopefully you guys have got some paper pen, pencil, and a ruler. Let me just make sure that I've got everything set up over here. Okay, it looks like everything's okay. If anybody you guys are uh, watching, if anyone's following along, do me a favor and um, just drop me a message to let me know that the stream is working because I'm continually paranoid about this since it dropped out the other day. Let's get rid of this. Make sure that we're in the middle. There we go. Lovely. Right. Let's just start off with a pen. So there's a few sort of basic techniques that I'm going to um, go through today, but we need to sort of get warmed up with our um, pen. And there's a there's a sort of a, a technique that I find really useful, which is something that we're going to be going over. So just to illustrate that, I'm going to use a. This is a. Um, an exercise that I, I learned off a YouTuber like quite a long time ago and do sort of as a sort of a warm-up exercise to get started. So you'll see that I've drawn these um, seven points just here. And these are essentially the corner points of a cube. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to join these up. Let me just move my pens out of the way. And you'll notice, so I could just use the ruler for this, but this is just, we're just getting warmed up. We'll use the ruler later on. So I want to introduce you to this idea. So first of all, I'm going to be a lot of the time turning the page round whilst I'm drawing. So you, this is one of the reasons why I'm not using a pad because it's a pain in the neck to do this. And the reason for this is the sort of the geometry of your arm is such that there are some lines that are easier to draw than others. So for example, if I want to draw a straight line, drawing diagonally, basically, if you can imagine that my shoulder is a pivot and if I just carried on I'd eventually draw just a massive circle with with minimal changes I can control that line to be a straight line so when you guys are drawing you might draw with your fingers like this for drawing small things you might draw with your wrist for drawing larger curves like this but if you want to get a nice straight sort of you're going to be as much as possible shifting the motion of the drawing over to your shoulder so that you can get a nice straight line like this. So what I'm going to do is, in order to make sure that I've got this, I'm going to rotate generally the line round so that I'm drawing in line with that um, line that I can draw with my shoulder. And I'm going to ghost line it in like this. So I'm going to just make the motion with the pen, but without putting the pen down. And so what I can do that is I can practice drawing the line without committing to drawing the line. So the goal is that I can get it so that I'm satisfied with that motion and then commit to the motion. So then I can do this line to here the same way. From here to here. So slightly missed on that one, but it doesn't really matter. So we've got our cube, which looks, if I'm going to be honest with you, super wonky because this is the first time that I've done this exercise today. Okay, so once you've done this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw diagonals across each one of the faces. Remember, this is just a warm-up exercise. So we're actually going to get into drawing some actual stuff in a minute. 
So that looks okay. Those lines are pretty straight. The, just the cube is a nightmare. It's a wonky as heck cube, but whatever. And then this is the bit that kills me always. And now you've got to do, oh man, I'm so bad at this. We've got to draw an ellipse that basically fills this side, then this side, then this side. So again, I'm going to just ghost the ellipse. Okay. This side. Oh man, alive. I think I need another eight coffees before I'm powered up to do this. Let me just try again. I usually do this a little bit smaller and I feel better about it. Yeah, today I suck, guys, which is not a great day to be sucking at drawing when I'm trying to do my first drawing tutorial. But anyway, let's just send that piece of paper over there. It never happened. It never happened. I'll go in and edit that so that it looks all pixel perfect later on. So what we're going to be looking at today is we're going to be looking at drawing in, um, drawing in perspective. So there's a whole load of different ways of drawing in perspective. And it, it kind of comes down to... Um, mathematically but without numbers kind of constructing images and based around the physical geometry of what happens when you see something so obviously you know in real life that the closer something is to you the bigger it is the smaller um, it gets as it gets further away so you have this um, scale that goes continually down to a point and the point basically where it just vanishes into nothingness is called the vanishing point and so when people are constructing images using perspective, then there's a bunch of different ways to do it. The easiest way is what we're going to be doing today, which is called one-point perspective, where you have a single vanishing point. In later sessions, we'll look at doing two-point perspective and then three-point perspective. And these are sort of variations. And as they become more complicated, they become more sort of visually accurate, um, but much more difficult. So the one-point perspective, the benefit of it is it's very easy to understand. And it also, for certain things, if you're going to be drawing, one point perspective is fine and will help you communicate three dimensionality and physical depth in a way that would be difficult to do just off the top of your dome. So people often, I think, have an issue with drawing because they, um, they always perceive it as being this sort of like weird innate skill. And our culture has got this, like, it's a bit of a, a thing about. Um, Okay, yeah, so we have this thing about this idea that um, the uh, the skill of drawing is something that you either have or you don't have. But it's not, it's like it's a physical skill. And a lot of the stuff that's been developed over the last like few hundred years, since kind of the Renaissance when these perspective techniques were developed, are about reducing that um, element of just looking at something and then being able to draw it. And by understanding sort of the physics of what's happening optically, being able to sort of reproduce it every time without having to have this sort of stress of um, each time sort of like mentally trying to recreate it without any kind of process. So this one point perspective is really simple. So what we're going to do is I want you guys to, um, we're just going to imagine that we've got uh that's our vanishing point. Okay, so this is where all of the um, lines are going to recede to. So if you guys draw just a square over here. And so I'm going to use the pencil for doing a lot of construction for this image. So I'm going to use it quite lightly. Because then afterwards, if we want, that we can, if you're just doing it just analog, you can erase the pencil lines. If we're working on the computer, then I'll go through how I approach this in a little bit. But it's the same kind of thing. If you draw lightly with this, then when you get the artwork onto the computer, the same as we've done in our Photoshop sessions before, then you can erase all of your construction lines. And it just looks like you're a straight off boss that you can always get it exactly right. So this is what we're going to use this ruler for straight away. Each one of these corners, if you can imagine that we're going to draw a cube, then the sides of this cube, the front side, 
because it's nearer to us, it's going to be bigger than the backside. And so in order to work out exactly where that backside is going to be, we're going to draw lines which go from the corners here to our vanishing point. And so I'm just going to draw these in as very light guidelines. Wow, who knew that the <laughs> pencil was going to make a noise? That's not too annoying. I hate that. So if you guys can um, see this, Yep. Um, yeah, we've got a few people online, so it says it's a bit laggy. I'm apologising for that because I'm using my phone to stream the main images going through OBS over here. Anyway, if this uh, cube receded to infinity, if it was like an infinitely long square prism, this is how it would look. But what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to work out how far back it's going to we want it to be, and then we're just going to basically chop it off here. So I'm going to switch over, use my pen. I'm just going to trace these front edges here. I'm going to work out where I'm going to project this cube back to. And this kind of going to do by eye. So I think just there. So now what I need to do, I need to project this line here, the top surface of the cube, the top front edge, back. So if you can imagine it's going to go sort of back along this line just here. And because we're only using one point perspective, this horizontal line here is going to be horizontal wherever I project it back to. So I'm going to make sure that this back edge is parallel to this front edge, like that. So now I'm going to do the same thing with the side here, project that to the side there. I think we're wobbling a sec. I hate that. Right. So we're going to move that back. Draw the line in like that, and then trace this line just here, and this just here. So now, if you can imagine that we want to erase our pen lines, if we were going to go and do this on the whole image, then we'd erase our pen lines like this. But what's nice about this is, because we can draw cubes anywhere, Once you've done this, this um, this technique will always work to make these cubes appear like they're in the same physical space. And so long as we make um, sure that we keep this consistent, the vanishing point consistent, then we can build these shapes that will also coexist in physical space. So what I want you guys to try doing is try doing this technique drawing shapes, even if you don't draw just a cube, if you draw basically whatever shape you draw flat as the front edge you can then project back. So even if I draw a really weird shape like this, the exact same rules are going to apply. Yeah. This shape is a terrible example.
Okay, so that looks okay. So any kind of any kind of shape that you put here, even if your cubes are sort of rotated around at weird angles, they'll all feel like they are existing in the same space. And so obviously, you guys aren't just going to be constructing your artwork out of cubes, because unless you're designing cubes for a living, there's not much money in that. And you don't need to design cubes because somebody already did it. They already exist. Somebody beat you to the punch, guys. Sorry, cubes are a thing. So if you can imagine you could build up quite a complicated image like this. But there's a lot more to even just using this very simple technique. <laughs> oh, Yoshi's spotting my black wing. Yeah, 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 I bought these. This is a like a hipster pencil, the ultimate hipster pencil. So my having said, it doesn't matter what kind of pencil you use, then pull out like the hipster pencil. Um, so, Let's say, for example, that I was going to build something that was a little bit more complicated than just a um, just a single uh, cube like that. Let's say I was going to draw some kind of a building or a scene or something. Is it still possible to do that using our one-point perspective technique? Yeah, it definitely is. And in fact, it works really nicely. So I'm going to switch over. I'm going to use a um, different pen and a different pencil just because... change things up a little bit. So this time we're going to have a, say like the front of a building. So we're going to build a building and I'll show you how it kind of is like a, a, a process of construction to do this. So let's say we've got the front of a building like this. And we want to sort of construct this. So we're going to construct a scene around it. So one of the things that you'll notice about this shape that I've drawn is that it's dead square on. And so optically, that's not 100% accurate, but it's going to just serve as a tool so that we can build our, um, our shape from here. Let me just see if I've got a slightly longer ruler than this, because it might be a little bit tricky to do what I'm about to do. There we go. So for this one, I'm going to project my vanishing point is going to be... So let's say this is a building. This is how tall a person is next to that building. So I want the vanishing point to be on the eye line of the person. And I want it to be quite far away so that we've got a nice sort of um, amount of depth to it. So this is where the horizon would be in, in a, a real scene, right? Because the, the horizon is always at, if your camera is at eye line, the horizon is going to be at a person's eye line. So let's say I want to project this building back. So I'm going to draw my construction lines like this, my guidelines, down obviously towards the vanishing point just here on the right. So this point here, because that's above the horizon, if there was a line coming from this, it would go through the building. So we don't need to draw that. But what we're going to do is we're going to have this front of the building is going to be quite small, quite narrow. And then it's going to come down like this. So I'm going to draw another line like this. So you can imagine that this is almost like a tower and then the building that projects out back behind it. So what we kind of do is just like construct this image in three dimensions. So I want to have a, um, a bit that protrudes out from the side of the building just here. So we're going to have, that's the front of that bit. 
And again, because we're just in one point perspective, we're going to draw this bit as though we were looking dead on for it. And what we're doing now is, I think we've, in a lot of my other stuff, we talk about how like the masks, for example, when you do the construction for the image, that's the bit that takes ages and is like a little bit boring versus when you're doing the actual artwork, which is quite quick and quite interesting. So this bit here is where you're sort of like constructing the image like this. This is the boring bit. And so I want this wall to end exactly where this building ends. So I'm going to, I could just freestyle it like that, or I could try and actually calculate where the back is. That's about right. So we've got a building here, this little cube protruding out from the top. I want to have a little bit, there's an inset at the front. It's almost like a an entrance into the building. So what I'm doing is I'm just sort of like thinking about what shapes I want, tracing them in, and then you can just use the perspective to sort of construct them and make sure that they work. And so we're going to have like an entrance way and this bit just here, this ruler of socks. And let's have like a little bit on top of the building just here. So hopefully this makes sense. You can kind of see the um, the outline of the building. So what we've done once we've done this, this is not a especially sort of magnificent architectural rendering, but what we're going to do is um, go through and I'm going to use the other pen because then we can erase it. I'm just going to trace off all of the outline sections so we can get rid of all of the um, bits that are construction. So when I'm doing this often, what I'll do is make sure that I've got all of the edges and the corners in place. And these kind of serve as like uh, targets almost, so that when you're drawing, you know if it's, you know if it's work because you're gonna hit all of these. And it's often these corners and the joining points between them that make an image like this sort of work.
so we've got our shape, a building all drawn in with our single point perspective. Let me just grab a slightly superior rubber to the one that's on the back of that pencil. Now, the reason I use this uh, pen is because this pen is sort of rubber immune. The one that I was using before is just a biro, and biros will smudge if you rub out. If you guys are using something like a, usually gel pen will work quite well for this. So we've got our building now that looks, I think it looks okay. We've got this um, geometric shape. It's sort of easy to understand. The outline is easy to read. And even though I've not had to pop a beret on at any point and have some kind of like crisis about sort of well, how to represent the shape, all you need to do is just draw each of the front faces that's perpendicular to the camera as though they were dead square on, and then project everything back here. So sometimes it might be that you want to have a, a shape that's not a cube. So we're going to, I think, probably talk a little bit more in depth at a later date about how to um, like construct shapes that aren't sort of quite as cubic as this. Uh, because one of the things that we would like to do is to, basically, if you know the shape that the object that you're going to draw is going to be, if you can kind of construct the cube that it exists inside and then gradually refine that shape down geometrically, eventually, once you're working with your light pencil lines, you can use those as a guide to then go in with a, a darker pen and sort of create the shape and it'll be sort of a little bit more mathematically correct. But, um, <laughs> Yoshi says, failed to redesign Cov Uni. This is, yeah, this is, I'm pretty sure this is how it all ended up being uh, designed in the start place, because it's boxy as heck. Um, cool, if anyone's following along or joining in, um, uh, let me know. We're gonna, um, I think we're actually gonna get started with what I was gonna draw today. So we're gonna draw, um, I'm gonna show you how to use this one point perspective technique to draw um, a like just a, an office chair, like a gaming chair, because it it's relatively straightforward to do, um, and because of the shape of it, it's going to work okay with our. Um, it's going to work okay with our technique. So I'm going to use for this is sometimes you notice before I was using the pencil and I used the um, rubber just to rub this out. So what I'm gonna do now, go away pencil, we're gonna use this. So this is just a cool gray marker. And I'm gonna use this to um, do my underdrawing. And the reason for this is that what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the artwork that we're doing this morning, I'm gonna scan it in, well, just scan it in, literally I'm doing it now, just to use the, phone to photograph it, bring it into Photoshop, and this afternoon we're gonna do the render, and part of that is there's a very easy technique to kill this in your um, in your drawing. But there's loads of different ways in order to do underdrawing. So if, for example, I ended up with a real messy piece of artwork to begin with, or like let's say, for example, that I did this piece of artwork entirely with like red pen underdrawing, which I quite often use, and I needed to um, produce a much cleaner copy but without having to necessarily go into Photoshop. The traditional way of doing this is, um, oh, it doesn't really come out very well on the screen, is to literally put the sheet underneath the sheet that you're working on. And usually if you're working on a layout paper, it's a little bit thinner than this, which is ooh, 80 GSM printer paper. But we're going to look at how we're going to draw our um, gaming chat to begin with. So I'm going to use the fine end of this. And literally all I'm going to do to begin with, I'm going to think about what the front edge of the chair is going to look like. I think maybe this way around is better for the paper, but it's not better for the screen, is it, Phil? Come on, use your head. So we're going to just draw, we want to have the um, headrest, the body of the chair, the seat, and then I'm going to put one of these little footrests that come sliding out because they look pretty cool. Um, so I'm just going to think about what the angle is going to be for us. I want the headrest to be here, the body is going to be like this maybe, the chair, the seat of it, I want to be slightly inclined up maybe, and then we're going to have a little footrest that looks like this. So this is just the initial phase of this, so I just need to think about exactly how it's going to look, because if you dive right in and start doing all of the construction and everything before you've visualised it, then you can end up making a mistake. So you'll see um, some of these guys on YouTube who do their sort of drawing tutorials. 
are like gangsters at this. And they will literally just leap straight in and start drawing super complicated images. Um, but do you know what? I just, I've never got on with that. And I think that the more that you can sort of plan out as you're going, the lesser the sort of cognitive load is, the more likely you are to make um, the artwork work rather than sort of try and gamble it. Because if you just, I, keep, I could just like leap in and start drawing all of the details. And then it, after I've done everything, go, no, the angle's wrong on that. It's too late. So do it bit by bit. So I want to have the side section of the head look like this. Um, one sec. So I had a couple of earlier versions when I was trying to work out what a gaming chair actually looked like because I realised that I decided I was going to draw one and then hadn't done almost any research whatsoever. So <laughs> like a bit of a prat. So again, I want to have this nice curve just here. So I'm just going to just try and visualise that like that. So I'm going to have a sort of a straight back on that, but it's curved around the front. So hopefully that works. It feels like that you could sit in that at least. I'm sure if the seat is too long. Anyway. Of course, I'm just checking the messages on there because I've not got my screen in front of me. Okay, so this is fine. I'm happy with this. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to work out where I want to have our vanishing point be. So I'll kind of... If you can imagine you're stood next to a chair, your eye line is going to be above the chair. So you're going to be looking down at the chair. So I want to have... Uh, vanishing point is going to be quite far up here, maybe right near the top, just there. So let me just, I'm actually going to put a little tiny point there because that is a too inaccurate a dot. So although we don't have cubes now, obviously these shapes don't have corners, I'm still going to project them back from I guess I might be using a pencil for this. Let's see if I can just... Wow. <laughs> oh, no. Ah, I spent a lot of time working out what was going to go wrong with my webcam, with the phone. I've got my tripod here with a little thing set up on top that's kind of like a selfie stick. I've got the chat over here. I've got like YouTube Studio running. I've got the Discord chat here so I can keep on top of everyone. I've got OBS Studio running. I've got cables coming in, charging my phone up so it doesn't run out of batteries. What could go wrong today? What could go wrong today? Did I think that I was going to snap a pen in half? It wasn't on the top of my list of things that might happen. And I don't have, I don't think, another one of these pens here. So, well, guys, it's been good. So well, let's uh, wrap up there in pencil. Jesus, that's not great. Right, so we're gonna just work with a pencil now. Man alive. Yeah, F in the chat indeed. Who saw that come in? It's because I'm so hench, guys. I've been I did the Joe Wick PE this morning with the kids. And obviously I've just become so like powerful and hench that I just wasn't prepared. It's just chaos, guys. It's just chaos. And I don't think that I've got another one of them pens handy, which is a shame because I've got every other thing. No, tell a lie. I've actually got quite a few. Hang on. Right, fingers crossed for this one. Let's see if we can do it. There we go. Right, <laughs> after that brief interlude, right, let's look at doing this. So basically what we're going to imagine is, how am I going to draw? Because there's no corner for this here. Does it work? Yeah, it works. So I'm going to put my finger on the um, actual angle, the um, vanishing point. I'm going to rotate round until we basically hit the edge of the object. And I'm going to project that line back. And so I'm going to carry on down until we hit the next thing that we need to project back. Project that back. 
And so you kind of do this sweep round from here, from the vanishing point. And everywhere where you need to sort of project that edge back, so here we go to the edge of that seat, and that gets pushed back. Leave that bit there. front edge there. And that just there. So you can see now that we've got sort of all of the front lines, this is a dirty pan, all the front lines to basically construct the rest of the chair. So what we need to do is to project that back and then just draw sort of a replica of this front curve. Where's the top bit there? Yeah, okay. So I'm going to go from this curve just here, curve, straight bit, and then ducks into there. This chair here. So we've got this curve here. I need to reproduce that curve there, there. That's great. Have I like angered the god of pens today or something? So now I'm just going to go over and just tidy up some of the bits so that I can get a sort of clearer idea of how I want it to look when I actually go in and produce that render with a pen. So I'm just putting in some sort of surface details onto the chair. And again, each time there's a line which is gonna go towards the vanishing point, all I need to do is just either just visualize it, or if I was being really careful, I'd probably use the ruler. Okay, so it's coming together. Pull that in a little bit there, pull that in a little bit there. So we get to make some sort of judgment calls about how it's going to look now, because we're not doing the final draw now. This is just the construction. So we're planning still. This is still planning. None of what we've drawn so far is actually going to appear on the final piece of artwork, because we're going to use the Photoshop to the Photoshop, like I'm a nan. We're going to use the Photoshop to clear all of this out. We Also, what we're lacking now is the central spine and the little wheels at the bottom, because what is a wheelie chair without wheels, guys? So again, I'm going to jump in and use the ruler. So work out where the center line for this is. I think probably your center of mass is going to be just back from the front here. So it's going to be pointing just there. So this would kind of be an ellipse. I would actually plan that out properly if I was going to do a full render. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to work out where I want the the front wheels to be. So I kind of want them to be more or less vertically below the four corners of the seat. So I'm just going to put them like that. So we're going to have a wheel here and it's going to connect like this. But where do the back wheels go? It's actually easy enough to work out where the back wheels go because we know where the top of these wheels are. So I just project that shape back.
because I know that it's going to be vertically below this corner, I can work out where it's going to be. And then because I know that it's going to be horizontal to that, this one's going to be just there. So I can draw these wheels in here. And we know that that's going to work. So I'm going to just put a little, another ring here. That's the top of that arm, the top of that arm, top of that arm, top of that arm. I'm going to have a wheel, and again, I can just figure out exactly what sort of size these wheels at the back are going to be. I say exact, it was like the least exact working out that I've ever done. But now we know that that is going to work in terms of the perspective that's coming from here. So although I've not slavishly followed this down at the bottom here, it at least sort of visually makes sense. Thank you for attempting to use the force to send me a pen, Dom Rav. I appreciate it, bud. <laughs> Charlie McGowan on a, a YouTube chat says, that's why I have boxes of pens and pencils of all shapes and sizes. Didn't make me any better. I think that we've all been through that. So I've got like my little, um, oh man, I've got like even loads and loads of boxes full of like, so I've got most of my stuff here, which has got all kinds of, like various drawing craft there. But mainly now I've sort of, I think that the way that I'm gonna construct this is by using a regular cheapo biro. So sometimes what I'll do when I'm working is I'll have a um, red pen, because you, again, you can get rid of that artwork in Photoshop and just use a biro drawing over the top. Something I was using earlier, which is sort of weirdly delightful, is a pen like this, because it's got a bunch of different things in it. So, Often, like red actually can be a bit of a pain to get rid of in Photoshop, but if you use green, like a light green color for your drawing or yellow, a pen like this, actually not terrible. I did some quite nice drawings with that before. So even if you're just, I mean, you look like a complete plunker if you're pulling one of those out of your pencil case, but to be fair, my pencil case looks like this, so it's a bad start to begin with. Um, so I think there's a, there's a certain degree of flex that people have in their um, like pen sets. So don't get sucked into that. It's like I said, it's it's in your hand, it's in your brain. That's what makes your artwork look nice. There's a story that, I, man, I know that this is be before your time almost certainly because you guys are young, but there's a, um, the the guy, the singer, songwriter, drummer from Genesis, this guy called Phil Collins, who my parents used to listen to when I was a kid a lot, has got a very unique drum sound. And there's a story from a um, drum technician who was setting up for a gig that he was performing at, talking about exactly how they need to mic the drum up and how they need to sort of set the drums up in order for him to produce this sound. Um, and the more seasoned drum tech was just like, just set it up the way you normally would because the sound is him. I know I often think about that, that you'll see people talking like on photography forums, they're like, oh, what camera did you use? What lens did you use for this? Or like, people talking about like, oh, what software did you use for this, that, or the other? But a lot of the time, the thing that makes the difference, the thing that people are trying to emulate, isn't the software or the camera or the exact kind of pen that you've got. Like I watch like Scott Robinson pen, um, YouTube videos, and I'll put a link because I think you guys should all watch that. And he talks about what kind of pen he uses. As though, the, as though the pen makes a difference to like, like if you get that pen, you can draw like Scott, no chance, no. But the reason he can draw like that is because he's done them 10,000 hours and then a load more. Um, and I'm still working on those 10,000 hours and a load more, but hopefully we're gonna get there. Guys, we're, we're gonna make it. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna, oh, I nearly zoomed in then. If you can visually mentally zoom in on your artwork. Now what I'm gonna do is find the right lines inside the guidelines that we've created. And so hidden inside those lines are the exact right lines for the shape that we're drawing. And so what we're going to do now is just go through this piece of artwork and draw those lines and ignore every other line. So eventually we'll be able to construct the whole of this chair And so often what I'm focusing on while I'm doing this first part here of doing the trace is the corners of things, because it's kind of like if the corners are right, 
then you're kind of just joining those shapes up. It becomes almost like a sort of a complicated dot to dot that you're constructing for yourself as you go along. And allow me to apologize because I don't have anything elucidating to say whilst I'm doing this, I just have to do it. Okay, so we've got the bulk of those, um, like the corner lines for the silhouette done. And the silhouette is one of the most important parts when you're doing a design like this. Because it gives you the sort of the read on the shape more than anything else. So you can see again that I'm just jigging the shape around and rotating the page around so that I can constantly keep on top of, like, make sure that I'm drawing it at the angle that sort of like my hand best draws at. And I suspect that you guys will find sort of what your own angle is. So kind of imagine these as being sort of almost like soft or, or recessed slightly panels in the um, back to provide some kind of support. And I'm going to do these as contrasting colours when I get into Photoshop later on. So hopefully it will pop a bit and look visually interesting rather than just sort of a generic, a general kind of a shape. I hope everyone's okay on the chat. Let me just double check over here. I'm just going to get sucked in too much. There we go. Yes, the gorilla. That's exactly it, Yosho, um, on the Discord. Um, Charlie McGann says, chart pack works well with Biro. No bleeding, unlike Copac, uh, Copic. Um, yeah, you'll, just, you'll find your own route for a lot of this stuff. So I'm never terribly worried about... Um, bleed through on this I'm just working with a single piece of paper most of the time I'd be working on a um, like a piece of a3 layout pad when I'm doing this and um, the reason why I'm not doing that is because I can't physically do that in this space uh, I might try and figure out a way of doing it but I just wanted to get started in a slightly more condensed way because I am my shed is um, not the perfect studio for this it's a bit um, bit of a bit of a bodge Okay, so we've got these, oh, we're doing this bit here. So the actual shape of the um, chair is drawn. We've got this done. This bit down here is perhaps gonna be a little bit more of a pain in the ass to do. Uh, pain in the neck, obviously would never say anything bad on a public stream like this, guys. You must have heard me wrong.
thinking that looks about right. I think probably on the final render what I would realistically do with this is I would use, uh, I'd be tempted to use a photograph of these wheels because they're just going to be generic chair wheels. But for now I'm just drawing a circle and then an ellipse on the front. give them some alloys look. So most of the chair is done now. Uh, I hope that it makes sense how we've done it. Let me just gonna add a few extra bits and pieces in now. So what I want to do is I oh, need the ruler. I'm gonna basically add a kind of like pillowing into this. So we're gonna have the ribs that again are gonna recede back into the back like this. And so with these, I'm just sort of visualizing where this line is. And because there's so much of the artwork that follows the perspective lines, it's actually relatively easy to sort of visualize and follow those lines now. So in terms of the actual shape of the seat and our little wheels at the bottom, pretty much looks like we've got it. So I don't know if anyone's um, anyone's necessarily following along with this, but I feel like we've got the um, the shape done. Let me just add a couple of extra bits and pieces in because I visualize that these are going to have little connector points just here, so little connector points just here. Now. One of the things that we've not touched on is how to make like the line weight work for us. So by default, obviously the pen is just going to draw um, one thickness, but with a biro especially, you can see that we've got either light or heavy line, and if you do a couple of passes, you can get a real dense kind of line. And there's a way to make that kind of line weight um, an integral part of your artwork. So, for example, because I drew the corners earlier on, the corners are slightly more dense. They've got a little bit more sort of visual weight on this artwork. And what that does is it adds a kind of sort of dynamism to the uh, drawing that would otherwise be lacking. This is one of the, I think, I figured this out ages ago. So like the visual tricks that this kind of um, concept illustration, concept art adds to create this sort of like uh, sensation of it being sort of perhaps a little bit more exciting than it would actually be if you were looking at the real thing. So I'm just going to add in sort of an offset just here so that it gives a bit of three-dimensionality to this side rather than just being flat. So I'm just basically doing a slightly shrunk down version of the edge of the front face. And I'm drawing it in quite light because it's just a surface detail. And again, it's projected back slightly from the Vanishing point. Now, most of these, man, that looks horrible. Most of these lines are quite light. But what I want to have is I want to have the silhouette pop a little bit more. So I'm just going to add a little bit of extra density to, especially 
the bottom of the object. So what I want to have is this feeling of gravity that it is heavier, like the line is heavier at the base. And it's almost like you're implying shading with your pen line. And what I also want to do is where it overlaps. So for example, you're looking past this object here, at this object here. So I want to make sure that there's a real strong like definition just there so that that separation is sort of visually apparent. And the same with this, because this edge here is in front of this edge here. I want to make it really clear that what we're looking at here is not a surface line, but the edge of the object. And you can see now it emphasizes this front edge a little bit more. So it makes it clearer that this object is behind it. And because we're working on a product sketch, the main goal is for us to very clearly visually explain what shape the object is. So again, at the bottom of the headrest to emphasize its separation from the rest of the uh, chair. Okay. Just trying to visualize it now. Okay, there we go. That is, I think, without spending the, another half an hour just fussing around with it, an okay kind of a sketch. I lied, I am going to spend the next half an hour fussing around with that. Nope, like, we're going to cut it off. This is where we are. So, apologies if I've not stayed in the middle of the viewport for the whole of this time because I'm still not used to working. If I had the screen, maybe it'd be easier to follow. But um, just to double check, if anybody could jump on the uh, chat, and <laughs> let me know whether any of what I've talked about so far has made sense. The um, the idea of using this uh, single angle, single um, vanishing point is something that sort of previously I wasn't a ginormous fan of because it always felt like it was the like the poor cousin of working with um, more vanishing points. So if we, when we start looking at doing a two and three point perspective, that that felt like that was like the real deal for me. But for something like this, the the single vanishing point makes it extremely clear, like how to construct the artwork, and you don't have to necessarily. Um, rack your brains too much making sure that everything visually works because it's such a straightforward technique. Yosho says, I got it. So if Yosho's got it, everyone else has definitely got it. Um, so we are we're around about an hour in. So it's not been an hour of drawing. It's been about half an hour of waffle and half an hour of drawing. So I would love if you guys could... Um, Try doing this, drawing your own chair, um, and ideally what I want you to do, if you can photograph that using your phone, make sure that you get it as square on as possible, reasonable lighting so there's not a ginormous gradient across it, and if you can bring that into Photoshop. So this afternoon at 2 o'clock, so that's in... around about three hours, we're going to be using Photoshop to render this so that we're going to take this sketch that we've done and we're going to give it a real nice sense of three-dimensional depth and work out how we're going to use the colour and I'll show you there's a couple of tricks that I've got for doing stitching and stuff like that. So hopefully that should um, that should work. If you guys have followed along with this tutorial, then um, that's awesome and I guess we'll see you guys later. If anyone's got any questions, look at that Yosho. Man alive, that looks great. Hold on. So if somebody has joined it, Yosho, just let me know in the Discord if I can put that on the other screen and I'll cast it just so that other people can see that it actually does work. Um, but if you don't want to, that's, that's cool too. Um, 
called, yeah, some, just basically somebody's following along and did a really nice, uh, a really nice version of it. Yeah, that looks great. Um, so like I said, we're going to be coming back later. If you don't have Photoshop and you're not interested in that, then um, we're going to be doing some more drawing stuff in the future. So tune in for that. If you guys are, right, let me, yes, he said, yeah, let me just cast this onto the other screen so that hopefully we can, uh, right, here we go. There we go. That's nice, right? This is um, Yosho. So he's one of my students from the uni. He's on, we've got like the Discord chat going on. So if you're a student and you're not on the Discord chat, then you should be because you're missing out on the, the top tier. But that looks great. Um, yeah, well done. Thank you very much for um, playing along. At least I'm satisfied now that it is a real thing that actually works and it doesn't just exist inside my head. Uh, yeah, great. Nice. So um, we're gonna we're gonna get into Photoshop. If you're not, like I said, in Photoshop, then um, come back. This drawing stuff is still, I think, quite useful. If you um, have any questions, feel free to ask them in the YouTube chat or in the YouTube co uh, comments. If you're watching this at a later date, do try it. Give it a go. See you guys at three o'clock. And um, oh, there was something else I was going to say. Yeah, if you subscribe to the channel and listen, this is one of them like, hey, hey, guys, hit like and subscribe. The only reason I mentioned that um, is because if you put the notification bell on, then I'm going to put a little, I'm going to try and put a post up that's going to explain what we're going to do in the session. And that means that you're going to be able to have what we need for the session ready for the session. So, for example, this one, I put a little note up saying, get yourself some paper and rulers and stuff like that. So, if you want to follow along live, then do that, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and then when I put one of those posts up. Um, these videos are, um, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not like some kind of like fancy pants, super duper YouTuber where I'm making loads of money. I've been, do, I've got the like, about, like about 4,000 subs. And in the last seven years, I've made 300 pounds from YouTube, okay? An incredible 300 pounds. But I've demonetized these videos because obviously, um just trying to get everybody um involved because it's coronavirus um lockdown in the uk now so it's the ideal opportunity for people to like brush up on their photoshop skills and also technically this is part of the um product design course at cov uni because if we weren't here doing this if we weren't all in like in boris lockdown then we would be i would be actually at the university in coventry teaching this stuff live. So, um, where was I going with this? It made sense when I started. There was a sentence and it's just carried on going forever. So ideally you guys just like chime in. I'm not saying like hit the notification bell because I'm desperate for all of them um, or like that YouTube dollars, but just because I think it's useful for you guys to follow along because then if something doesn't make sense, then you can ask any questions. That's what the end of the sentence was gonna be. Um, and then not only have we reached the end of that sentence, but we've reached the end of today's video. So if you followed along, um, like your show, give yourself a pat on the back, a high five, and a hygiene handshake. Um, and I will see you guys at, yeah, I'll see you guys at, oh no, somebody's just pointed out that it normally, with five wheels to be stable. That's one of the main advantages of this chair, is that because it's got four wheels, there's a sort of like always a sense of perilous uncertainty that you're gonna fall down. It keeps you on your toes, makes you better at gaming, better at life. Who needs five wheels on that bombshell? I'm going to wrap it up and I'll see you guys. Um, yeah, I'll see you guys real soon. Stay safe. Bye-bye.